Wow, what a great crowd. Thanks for coming out on a Saturday night. My name is Midge Woolsey, and on behalf of Michael Fornabio and the board of the Goethe Listener Foundation and Carl Michaelis of the Listener Charitable Fund, it is my great, great pleasure to welcome you to the first in a series of three green space events featuring classical music's next generation of vocal artists. Tonight's from Manhattan School of Music. Indeed. At the Goethe Listener Foundation, we are into providing young opera singers with encouragement and financial support to help them excel in the ever-challenging world of opera. Tonight's host, for instance, is one of our great success stories. He was a prize winner in the Foundation's 2010 International Vocal Competition, and since then, his star has risen exponentially as an award-winning countertenor, actor, and producer, many, many more titles, you name them, he does it, um, who has led performances at opera companies around the world. His co-host, and more accurately, I should perhaps say, his co-creator for this evening is a woman acclaimed by Opera News as being among the top accompanists of her generation. She currently serves as music director of the Metropolitan Opera's Lindemann Young Artist Development Program and as a member of the collaborative piano faculty at Manhattan School of Music. Please welcome Anthony Roth Costanzo and Myra Huang. <laughs> Thank you. Good evening. What an amazing crowd. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. When Carlene Graham from the Manhattan School of Music reached out to Anthony and I and let us know that the Gerda Listener Foundation was sponsoring this concert, we had to come up with a program. And we looked at the date and realized that this concert would be happening on the weekend of Lunar New Year. So we took that as the inspiration for our theme. Um, we are so excited to present this amazing group of singers and pianists who are all students at the Manhattan School of Music. Anthony and I are also alumni. Um, we also have one alumni 
but uh, the theme was really based on home. They say that the largest migration on Earth happens on Lunar New Year because of the number of people who go home to see their families. And so you'll see that in our program today, actually the repertoire represents eight different languages. And you'll see uh, that throughout you know, the repertoire that we've chosen, that they're all singing in some way about where do they belong and their longing for home or their delight in home or their struggle with not having a home. So we're very excited to share this with you tonight. And I'm so excited to be reunited with Myra. Um, we first met uh, when I was doing the competition Operalia, and I always say that I won because Myra <laughs> worked with me. Um, we did many That's things totally together. Good. No, no, it was <laughs> fabulous. Um, but uh, it's thrilling to bring all of these worlds together that I have been a part of WQXR, the Gerda Listener Foundation, MSM, and most importantly, to hear these incredible young talents and hear what the future is going to sound like. So the thread that ties everything together tonight is my friend, an incredible poet, librettist, and writer, Sokuntari Sue. Um, yay! Uh, and I'm just going to tell you a little bit about her. Um, she was born in a refugee camp in Thailand shortly after her parents fled Cambodia after the fall of the Khmer Rouge. And um, she came to the Bronx, and now she's a founding member of the Cambodian American Literary Arts Association. She's received fellowships with the, opera, uh, the American Opera Project, the Poets House, the Willow Books, and CUNY, as well as commissions from Washington National Opera, the Asian American Writers Workshop, and Chautauqua. Um, she has written the libretto for an opera at the Kennedy Center. She uh, ha is a PhD candidate in English um, at CUNY at the Graduate Center and a lecturer at CCNY. And she has a book of poetry called Aspada in New York um, that's amazing. I recommend you all get it. And uh, she has another one coming out in the fall. So it is our great honor to be led on this journey by Sokontari Sue. Hi, everyone. Happy New Year. <sighs> this is really incredible. Um, what a magical collaboration this has been. Um, first, many thanks to the Gerda Listener Foundation, Carlene Graham, Myra Huang, the talented singers of the Manhattan School of Music, whom you're going to hear tonight, and to Anthony Roth Costanza for choosing to feature my work and for uplifting the Cambodian diaspora's voice through my inclusion, especially in such uncertain times and and sometimes frightening times for folks who look like me. And thank you all for being here and witnessing what is still a rare Asian American narrative. And as we vocalize and transmit these works across from the stage to you in the audience, I like to think that all the works tonight function as letters in the air to you. Uh, just a quick note about my work. Uh, my themes are around Cambodia, home, homeland, Buddhism, lineage, heritage, sound, language, survival, and music. The word Khmer is a term used to describe the people and language of Cambodia. I use the terms uh, Khmer and Cambodian interchangeably. So. Start the program. Okay. Dear grandmother, we peeked at Angkor Wat, saw the red sandstone of Banti Srei, the citadel of women. Ornate arches, arches curved into thighs and hips of women homage to the Buddha, a fortress of deities. My last day in Phnom Penh, you made eggs. My beloved staple tastes impossibly delicious besides some raw machu, this country's chicken soup. I let myself miss you. Baguettes are sold by men on sea clothes in baskets strapped to their backs. I imagine bread dough beaten as it rises. I try not to need you. I want to push it down. The lines on your skin map my lineage like a family recipe. It's easier not to see your face. To know you is to feel you, to love and lose you when you leave me.
So actually, this piece isn't mine. Uh, <laughs> it's um, uh, it's a, a surprise. Uh, it's um, a piece called Jampa Matnamong. The Cambodians are smiling in the room. This is actually a piece by Cambodia's greatest singer, Lokta Sin Sisamut. Like many artists, um, it is presumed that he perished along with an estimated 2 million Cambodians under the Khmer Rouge regime, which reigned from 1975 to 1979. The song is about the flower of Matnambang, a kind of love song, but also a sonic shorthand for the nostalgia of the glory of Cambodia, a song which is now seeing a huge revival here in the US. Having taught this song for the performers in the play Cambodian Rock Band, I humbly present my sung version and will then read its translation by my colleague Trent Walker. So uh, please be kind to me because I'm doing a cappella. <laughs> is the translation. Bat Bong, my heart of hearts. I said farewell, but still you bind me. So far from you, I live in regret, caught in grief that won't let me go. Bat Bong, my faded companion, I've yearned for you, an endless ache. As we are joined in life's long storm, tell me about the time we first met. It's been many years, do you remember? You're as close as my skin, as my breath. I've hitched my dreams to your sweet face, hoping that you are my destined one. Oh, Batnam Mong, I've longed for you always. When will I see your face again? My heart's on fire, 
I am all undone, longing for you, Jampa of Batambal.
homeland. When we think of home, we might think of a city or a region or a country. To me, home also means the home that we all share, this earth. So when my sibling, who was 13 years old at the time, Parker Griffin, uh, wrote a poem called Warm Water Flows, I knew that it had to be set to music. So I went about composing a song cycle. And this is the third installation in that song cycle. And the poem speaks very directly about our need for saving our environment. And that we are the last hope uh, for this world. The poles are melting, our climate is changing, and it is up to us to save our environment. We still have time. Baptism. My brother is lost in Cambodia. I search the killing caves of Phnom Sapo, where childish scrawl entreats donations, a scratch resembling blood, redemption for purpose, for purchase. 
Above Sapo, reminders are skull, already cliche in the country of death patties. In this city on the hill, novice monks dream on the ground draped in their robes on limestone floors, a canvas of red and orange. 30 years ago, crimson bled into igneous rust. Jostled off cliffs, countrymen waited in agony, future corpses stacked on the jagged hill. Darkness is abundant. I was their comrade one morning, and now, surrounded by phantom flesh, the smell tingles. You cannot imagine the loneliness. Where is my rebirth to save me from this hell? In the land of enlightenment, the stones cry out. Voices inundate my path to the fountain, sprawled on the hillside, hidden in the catacombs. This is a country full of wraiths. Chopsticks and noodle strands mark the morning meal. Will I remember you for the pork broth or my parents beneath the temple's archway in the viewfinder? Mango trees flutter beside the shack where you dispersed in the wind. You are embedded as in me as palm trees at sunset in Buttonbong, a cousin's awkward English, my incomplete Khmer, or the first argument where mother remains angry. I slept with geckos the night the terrain absolved us. Above Phnom Sapo, monks rained holy water above my head, a delicate kiss of orange blossom petals.
Mekong song. I compose you letters in the air among scattered saffron dust on this road. Darling pineapples with golden flesh call for attention in roadside display. Vendors in conical hats heckle motorists in face masks who reply with shrill retorts. Time slows down to the soft folds of a monk's robe in traffic. The day departs in turmeric hues across the Phnom Penh sky. A two-stringed fiddle announces a resplendent wedding of silk and sashes. Poles of the bow resonate across my ribcage in continents to you. I am the longing in its timbre, the ache in the string's tension.
morning song. I can hear you calling in a hunger cry to reveal your need. I can hear you coo as you discover your hands and your eyes light up. As you soften your voice, I'll be the embrace you seek to carry you to sleep. I imagine you will rise with the sun, my morning call at the start of each new day. To see a world in a grain of sand And a heaven in a wild flower Jungle Crossing 1980. The fields are rife with landmines. Legs and arms rain down like Nixon's bombs on the Cambodia-Vietnam border. Bruising the ground with craters, this is how they raped the land. Our ancient enemy, the Vietnamese, extends soldiers and appendages across our border once more. In their exodus, gaunt Cambodians meet pirates who strip their dignity for gold as Thai refugee camps bed them beside dirty soldiers and first world promises. 
I recall the Phnom Penh of our teens bursting with succulent juice from pomelos ripped from their peels spraying the boardwalk. Remember the monsoons when floods meant ponds for children, good crops meant families ate year round when life and living still mattered. Music plays from an unknown distance. Survivors gather to resume a dance unfinished, unfurling their fingers in gestures once described as lotus blossoming. Mother tongue. Cambodian script resembles slurped noodles in Phnom Penh, immersed in orange curry, peppers of blood red and turmeric, 
golden as my cousin's monastic robe. I wanted only noodle dinners for two weeks as a child. Mother sliced strips of beef, of beef like M dashes. They stiffened in the heat of her broth. Some characters resemble the outline of my daughter's pinky, sometimes inverted, a loop beneath or above. Every morning I detangle the knots she creates with her dreams, draw a line to part her hair. Once combed, I braid her hair into scents just as I unravel the curls of this script, trace family lines pronounced on my hip, curved in my eyes, looped like my mother's sarong, coming undone.
common ground. Dragonflies welcomed me past rice trails, past cows with ribs fading into vision through gauze-like skin. The guy was author of my father's childhood, home to singing ghosts and scorpions propelled from closets. Countryside folk invite you home, invite you to the fields. When will you come to the Sarai? Around slivers of bike paths, thin barriers between rice plots, I stop before an ornate rectangular plot. Family is planted here like rice. My grandparents interrupt the stalks. A poke of incense introduces me. My uncle chants in Khmer, your grandchild has come all the way from America and how beautiful, look at her. She's even as tall as you are. I throw my head back in laughter. He replies, ah, she can understand, but she cannot speak back. We had the latter in common. Dice a 
Chin Tong, farewell in Khmer. Now that I've seen your face, I'm going to miss it.
Reading Between the Rib Cage. Late summer and glowing street lamps trace lines in my vision, a heady Parisian scene as I pass. In the sanctuary of Eglise saint Ephraim, Bach cello suites echo in the dark cavity. The bow sweeps up the church beams and scrapes down its foundation. In the front pew, a woman rests her head against a man. He rubs her palm, keeping the pulse. God and the cosmos are in box arpeggios, vibrations of the universe and spelled out chords, double stops, and arms stretched across a cello's bridge in a yawn. With each pull of the bow, music enters our ribcage and notes fall in between our bones. Just 